I've been working on this writing project for a while about aging, and I was asking what was supposed to be a super simple question. Which is more important to longevity, diet or exercise? And I, that's pretty straightforward. I was surprised to find out that it's almost impossible to get a clear answer from the literature on that. And then I found this study. So this is Atefatfar et al. in 2023 in the journal Nutrition. I had this idea that you would expect to see that the effects were basically comparable. First thing, you have to understand what a Kaplan-Meier curve is. KM curves show survival over time. So the best case scenario is a line that only slightly slopes down. It stays high for longer. The bad case should show a rapid slide downward. So should we, we'd expect to things look like shallower slopes for the healthy choices and the steeper slopes for the worst choices. And more choices equals longer life, right? So maybe something like this. Good diet and exercise, but not both, fall in between these two lines. But no, in the real data, diet didn't make any difference at all. Why? Why would that be? Diet has to do something, right? And it does. I found lots of papers on how diet increases this biomarker or that biomarker or heart attack risk. So it's not like diet does nothing, but it doesn't make us live longer. That flies in the face of common sense. We can imagine reasons why this might have happened in this specific paper, like self-reporting your diet quality is notoriously unreliable. Diet questions asked in studies might not have reflected a really good dietary best practice. It might be that the diet has a smaller effect that, than exercise, so it would take longer to see that in the data. But this was a 20-year study, and it did cover 6,000 people. That's, that's not bad. Okay, so despite my best efforts, I couldn't find the study that I was sure must exist, that must show that a good diet increases longevity and increases it to a similar proportion as exercise. It seems like an obvious statement. It must be true, right? People have measured this, right? I even thought about picking a fight with the internet. I was so desperate to find this paper I was sure existed. I knew that if I posted a video with the statement, I don't think diet does much of anything, someone was going to prove me wrong. Everybody loves proving someone wrong on the internet. Anyway, why wouldn't I just subsist on Skittles and rice if I could eat whatever I wanted? Somebody's gonna say, we have to optimize our nutritional input to maximize health. Meat is poison. No, meat is medicine. I figured people would get mad and drop comments and then go off and find the study that I'm looking for. And I was even gonna offer a trophy but then I found it. <laughs> this study from 2024, this year, is the first paper I could find that actually shows actual clear statistical evidence that diet reduces all-cause mortality. The meta-analysis of the previous research to date was inconclusive, right? They suggested a small decrease in all-cause mortality, but not statistically significant. And that's crazy. Health food is this multi-billion dollar industry, and it seemed like when it came to lifespan, this whole thing was a scam, that Twinkies and Big Macs would be almost as good as spinach and cashew butter. But, but no, 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 there is an effect. And I'm really glad I found it. In specific conditions, you know, I, I, that's different. So if you have uh, diabetes or phenylketonuria, that's a separate issue, and clearly diet is going to have a huge impact, and they're eating the wrong thing is going to kill you. Um, let's take food allergies. That's not what we're talking about. It seems like once you get past those issues, there's a point of diminishing returns. And it sure seems like the effort result curve for diet looks more like a plateau than a hill. And although I did finally find a paper that shows some results, it's, it's a modest impact. Additional nutrients are basically just peed away. They're molecules we can't really use very well. And marketing would make it easy to think that more effort would have proportionately more result. Spend more, get more. But that doesn't seem to be the case. The best evidence for a benefit isn't health food and lots of multivitamins and superfoods. It's the following nine point scale, higher you score, the better. A score of six or higher is like a 20% reduction in all cause mortality, or in other words, you live longer. And the study has its limitations. It was conducted exclusively in women. The effects were not very big. It still had big error bars, but it shows the effect of good diet at 23% reduction in all cause mortality, plus or minus 7%. Like, that's just basic good advice, right? That's what your mom told you growing up, probably. It's rooted in measurable effects now of a good diet. Other studies show that this diet lowers the odds of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, degenerative neurological conditions. It improves biomarkers for 
health, like blood cholesterol. These are good guidelines. They're a lot like uh, Michael Pollan's in defense of food guidelines. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. But these guidelines are they're just kind of boring. They undermine these sort of big sensational claims by industry, by marketing, by influencers. There's a cultural perception that some foods are sacred and others are sinful, like saturated fat or trans fats or antioxidants or low sub low fat substitutes, low carb substitutes. And and they're not nothing. Those can change mortality by that same range, 20 to 30 percent. I want to believe that eating tons of spinach smoothies is going to help me live longer. I can blend it brown and chug it down. I want to think that's going to have more impact than just, you know, pleasant poops. But the effect size is like, just not that big. It's still worth going after. But studying small effects like this is hard. And it's complicated by the facts we talked about. Self-reporting of diet is not terribly accurate. Different diets affect people differently. That's wild. One food that seems to affect one person positively might affect another person negatively. The Mediterranean diet is probably a good guideline for most people under most circumstances. But maybe there's an ideal diet for each person. Maybe. But that slope is low and it's going to be really hard to find it. We don't get a huge health benefit from a lot of effort and expense on food. Good diet is good, but we're talking eight years, not 20 or 30. It's more than a rounding error. It's worth trying for, especially when making those same choices is cheaper and easier. But we're not talking about radical life extension here. So I want to take all the nutrition hype that I see with a bit of a grain of salt. If you want to check out uh, any of the references that I discussed in this, uh, check out the links in the doobly-doo. Uh, if you want to see my last video on setting iron on fire, you can check that out here. I'm working on more material on aging and life extension. And if you're interested in that or science in general, I hope you'll give me a like or a subscribe and tune in next time.